Thank you for joining us this morning as we begin our worship here in Aiken Parish in York. If it's your first time here, uh, we are so delighted that you are joining us and hope you will join us again as well, either online or in church. We're going to begin with a sentence of scripture on this fourth Sunday of Easter. A verse from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 22. As all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ. Let's pray this prayer together, an old prayer by Gregory of Nazianzus, written around the year 389. Let's pray. Yesterday I was crucified with Christ, today I am glorified with him. Yesterday I was dead with Christ. Today I am sharing in his resurrection. Yesterday I was buried with him. Today I am walking with him from the sleep of death. Amen. We're going to have our first song of worship and Caris and Tony are going to lead us in a song reminding us that we have come into his house, that's the Lord's house, to worship him. So let's sing together. We have come into his house and gathered in his name to worship him. We have come into his house and gathered in his name to worship him. We have come into his house and gathered in his name to worship Christ the Lord. Worship him, Christ the Lord. So forget about yourself and concentrate on him and worship him. So forget about yourself and concentrate on him and worship him. So forget about yourself and concentrate on him and worship Christ the Lord. Worship him, Christ the Lord. Let us lift up holy hands and magnify him and worship him. Let us lift up holy hands and magnify his name and worship him. Let us lift up holy hands and magnify his name and worship Christ the Lord. Please join in with these responses. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has given us new life and hope by raising Jesus from the dead. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Blessed are you, God, Lord God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory for ever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land, so now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day that you have made and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And we say together, blessed be God forever. We turn to our confessional prayers now. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. 
Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Let's be still and quiet for a moment as we offer ourselves as we are to the Lord now. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. We respond together. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing, and we respond together. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. And again, finally, let's respond together. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. Thank you, Lord, that you are a God of love, mercy and forgiveness. And through the power of the cross and your resurrection, you have set us free from sin and death to live for you and to serve you in your kingdom. Amen. We're going to have another song a well-known but modern song, In Christ Alone. Forth in glorious day, up from the 
We pray together our collect for this fourth Sunday of Easter. So let's pray. Risen Christ, faithful shepherd of your Father's sheep, teach us to hear your voice and to follow your command that all your people may be gathered into one flock to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And now Anne will lead us in our first reading. The reading is taken from Acts chapter 4, verses 5 to 12. On the next day their rulers and elders and scribes gathered together in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest and Caiaphas and John and Alexander and all who were of the high priestly family. And when they had set them in the midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are being examined today concerning a good deed done to a crippled man, by what means this man has been healed, let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. By him, this man is standing before you well. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In a moment, Jennifer is going to bring us our gospel reading and she's going to begin that reading with some acclamations which you're invited to join in with, the Alleluias. The words will come up on the screen. But before that, we're going to have a song led for us by Caris and Tony, a lovely modern version of the 23rd Psalm. The Lord's my shepherd. Let's sing. The Lord's my shepherd, my Lord, want. He makes 
me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters. His goodness restores my soul, and I will trust. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. Hallelujah. He has defeated the powers of death. Hallelujah. Jesus turns our sorrow into dancing. Hallelujah. He has the words of eternal life. Hallelujah. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The reading this morning is taken from John chapter 10, verses 11 to 18. I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the Good Shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loved me, because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my Father. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. During the time of Lent preceding Easter, our focus was pretty much on the idea of repentance, really, about looking at our faith and looking in at ourselves and how we believe, what we believe, and how we live our Christian life. And as part of that, we had various disciplines, such as giving things up or taking things on or doing other things for people in particular as a way of um, loving people through Lent. During this Eastertide, which we're now in, our focus is more on our growing in the likeness of Jesus, in the light of his resurrection, about being an Easter people. Last week in the sermon, we had the passage from Acts 3, and we were reminded of Peter and John, two of the disciples, who in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, commanded a lifelong disabled man 
to get up and walk, which he did. The observing crowd which had gathered around were, if you remember, according to Acts chapter 3 verse 10, utterly amazed. And it's not surprising that they were too. We also, last week, considered the vast change, the vast difference between the disciples post-crucifixion to post-resurrection. They moved from being frightened for their lives, locked away in rooms together, to that of a newfound confidence and an acceptance of a commission that Jesus gave them to share the good news. We also considered how post-ascension and post-Pentecost, that as promised, God came upon his disciples, transforming them with the power of the Holy Spirit. In our first reading from Acts chapter 4 today, the following chapter from last week, the story continues, although the reading we heard didn't continue on from that. It missed a few verses which we now need to have in order to make sense of this story. So following on from last week, the passage that we could have had before today's was this, Acts chapter 4, beginning at verse 5. And as they, that's Peter and John, were speaking to the people, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, greatly annoyed because they, that's Peter and John again, were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. Peter and John were arrested and put in custody until the next day, for it was already evening. But many of those who had heard the word believed, and the number of the men came to about 5,000. What an amazing difference from being locked away in a room, frightened for their lives, to proclaiming the resurrection of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit and seeing 5,000 people coming to know Jesus. What a difference they have made. This week, it's not so much about what precedes the passage, which I've just shared with you, but as what follows it. Today's reading begins by saying, the next day. The next day, they, that's Peter and John, were brought before the elders and scribes and rulers, Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and the whole of the high priest family. What an amazing list of people. What a big crowd. What a big and frightening court that Peter and John were brought before. Peter and John were questioned, verse 7 continues, by what power, by what name did you do this? That's heal that disabled man. Actually, it's the same question that the crowds asked last week as well, isn't it? Verse 8 continues, Peter filled with the Holy Spirit. In other words, He's not by himself, he has the power and the words of the Holy Spirit. Anyway, he, he says, and he sort of announces to that big assembled crowd, and remember how many were there. Let it be known to all of you and all of the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and then he sort of berates them as he did last week, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. By him, this man is standing before you well. Now, actually, if you think about it, earlier on in the Gospels, Jesus told them these things that he was going to do and that they were going to do for him. So, for example, in Luke chapter 12, verses 11 and 12, Jesus says to the disciples this. He says, when you are brought before synagogues, rulers and authorities, 
do not worry how you will defend yourselves or what you will say, for the Holy Spirit will teach you at that time what you should say. Isn't that amazing? And isn't that amazing what um, Peter actually went on and did because God had given him the power through the Holy Spirit and the words he needed at that time. Anyway, back to our story in Acts. Peter goes on, verse 11. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. Now, this use of the word cornerstone, and if anyone's listening to this and is aware of building uh, a house, for example, or a wall, you will know that uh, you have to lay the first stones. And we often lay a cornerstone. It's often the first structure laid uh, for any building. And it's to that cornerstone that everything else relates. All other stones are laid in reference to that and relate to that cornerstone. And so this analogy is about us all as living stones relating our lives back to Jesus as that cornerstone from where we begin. So what is the focus for us then this week? It's about us being an Easter people, confident, looking out. You remember the uh, Living Lent booklets that we had. All the way through there was this constant reminder that we need to look out that we need to share our faith in Jesus Christ. It's something that Jesus asked us to do. So the focus of being an Easter people is by our continual desire to grow in the likeness of Jesus, in the light of his glorious resurrection. It's a call from Jesus to us to be lifelong disciples who are about lifelong learning in Jesus Christ. There should be no point for us as disciples of Jesus that we say, I don't need to do any more. I don't need to read the Bible anymore. I don't need to pray anymore. I don't need to be part of home groups anymore. I've done it all before. We need, and we're reminded today, to be constantly ongoing with all of these disciplines. And we're reminded of why we should do that, because it's in order that we can look out and share all that Jesus has done for us. So there's, for example, a focus on Jesus who often referred back to God's word. He, when questioned by people, referred them back to God's word. Jesus opened the scriptures, for example, in the upper room when he was trying to explain to those disciples and reminding them of all that was prophesied and all that he had done. He wants to show us who he is all the time. And there's that reminder that we are to show others who he is and the difference that he's made in our lives. It's what he expects and it's what we should want to do to be witnesses to his resurrection. If we are not, then we have to ask ourselves if we are fully serving Christ in our discipleship. In today's Gospel, the Gospel of John, Jesus suggests that people need to know about Jesus being the shepherd. And we heard that story of Jesus and the sheep. How can people know about Jesus as being the shepherd or one of the many other analogies that are used in the Bible? For example, at one point, Jesus describes himself as the way, the truth and the life. But in the context of all we've heard today, we have that reminder that Jesus is the only way, the only truth and the only life that we should follow so that we can know him as he as a shepherd knew the different sheep's voices and the different sheep could recognize the shepherd's voice. So it is for us as disciples that as close as we keep to Jesus, he will know our voice, recognize us, and we, 
his. We also need to accept his authority as that shepherd of the sheep over our lives. It's enormously important. As we are told in verse 12 in our reading today, there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given amongst which people must be saved. In other words, all of the beliefs, all of the philosophies, belief in fairies or finances or anything else won't save us. It's belief in Jesus that does. Well, why do we need to share our faith? Listen to these words from Romans chapter 10, verses 14 to 15. Paul writes this, But how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? How can people call on Jesus if they don't know about him? And how can they believe in him if they have never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? And how will anyone go and tell them without being sent? Well, actually, Jesus is sending us to do precisely that. This passage goes on. That is why the scriptures say, how beautiful are the feet of messengers who brings good news. That's you and me. So we are called as disciples of Jesus Christ to live Christ's story, to be disciples every day, never waning or becoming apathetic, but with enthusiasm and zeal, not being ashamed of Christ, but ready to proclaim his name. In the baptism service, there's a part, a prayer after a baptism, which says, do not be ashamed to confess the faith of Jesus Christ, but to fight valiantly against the sin, the world and the devil. We've seen that in the disciples in our stories of Acts today and last week, the difference that they make since they came to faith in Christ and allowed the Holy Spirit to use them to proclaim the name of Jesus. Will you use the opportunities that God gives you day by day to share your Easter faith with your family, your friends, your work colleagues and others that you meet? perhaps on the bus or at the shops, whatever you're doing. The call is from Jesus. How will we respond to it? Well, we're not by ourselves. Like Peter wasn't by himself. He had the power of the Holy Spirit, which was able to give him the words he needed. We too have that. And we have the new diocesan Living Christ's Story initiative to follow too. And going back to these booklets, and I will end with this, the reminder that we need to be God's story for other people too. I'll just read this short extract and a prayer at the end. The story we share is both God's and ours. We can feel nervous about speaking about things so profound and personal, but the Holy Spirit helps us in our weaknesses if we are open to his guidance. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for the story I have to tell about the difference you have made in my life. By the Holy Spirit, Please give me the words and opportunities to tell that story to others. 
Amen. Let's affirm what we believe together using these words, which we say together. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now Mo is going to lead us in our intercessions this morning, followed by the Lord's Prayer. And the intercessions themselves will be interspersed with Caris and Tony, uh, leading us in a short musical uh, intercession, uh, which is Listen Lord, and the words will come up on the screen as they sing. So as you pick up that song, why not join in singing along with that at home? Let's begin our prayers by hearing that first of all. Listen Lord, listen Lord, not to our words but to our Drawn together by God, let's bring to him our concerns for the church and the world. We will use a response today. When I say, bless me, Lord, let me know your heart. You respond, my life is yours. Let me know my part. Bless me, Lord, let me know your heart. My life is yours, let me know my part. We pray for a greater affection and care for one another in the church. We pray especially for all Christians threatened and under attack. Lord, we ask for discernment through your Holy Spirit. Show us how to be your church here in Acom, and how to love and serve our neighbours. Show us each as individuals how we can best use our time, our gifts and our talents to serve you. As the PCC meet on Monday evening and as we meet for our APCM in May, we ask that you would give us a clear and united vision of how we as a church should use and maintain our finances, our buildings and our manpower so that we can share the joy and hope of new life in Christ with those we live amongst. Bless me Lord, let me know your heart. My life is yours, let me know my part. Listen, Lord, listen, Lord, not to our words, but to our prayer. You alone, you alone, understand and care. We pray for all in positions of leadership and influence in the world. 
that they might use that power for good, speaking truth and acting with justice and mercy. We pray for the people of Myanmar, Hong Kong and Russia and other countries where people are protesting against injustices and brutality of their leaders. Give courage to them and bring change. Let your will be done. Show us how we, each one of us, can challenge wrongs. Prompt us when to speak out, to act or to support financially those agencies who support and work for those who are powerless and depressed, for the modern day slaves, those who are abused and displaced by conflict and war. Bless me, Lord, let me know your heart. My life is yours, let me know my part. We pray for those who are carers and those they care for. Father God, give comfort and healing to those who are ill, peace to the anxious and reassurance and comfort to the lonely. Give strength and courage to those who care for others, especially at this time to NHS workers, and prompt us to know if we could relieve the loneliness of someone with a phone call, a smile or some kind words. We pray for the people of India, Brazil and other countries where they are ill-equipped to cope with the spread of Covid. We pray that other countries might give support and that you might comfort those in their grief. We lift before you now the names of those we know who are suffering at this time. Bless me, Lord, let me know your heart. Bless me, Lord, let me know my part. Listen, Lord, listen, Lord, not to our words, but to our prayer. You Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Listen, Lord. Listen, Lord, not to our words, but to our prayer. You alone, you alone, understand and care. Our notices this morning, just two notices, quite short. The first is that tomorrow, that's Monday, uh, the 26th of April, is uh, our next PCC meeting. So please do hold the PCC in prayer as they meet together and as they invite the Archdeacon of York to join them 
as they talk about whether we have too many buildings or not and one or two other uh, related items. The second notice is about our annual parochial church meeting. Please ignore all previous notices given out about this. We are holding our meeting on Sunday the 16th of May and we will only now be holding that online at 11 o'clock. So if you would like to join us for that uh, online through Zoom, uh, then please let us know and we'll let you have the code. We will write round to everybody on the electoral roll to tell them the details, but we do hope that you will join us uh, for our annual parochial church meeting, 11 o'clock on 16th of May, which is a Sunday, and that will be on Zoom. That will follow on from a 9.30 service in church, which will be shortened in order to allow people time to get home and to get their computers up and running. And so we move on to our final song. And uh, we had a song earlier on in the service, which was in Christ alone, thinking of Jesus and all, all that he's done for us and the faith that we can have in th and through him. Well, this song, uh, I suppose picks up that sort of theme but it also picks up something that was mentioned in the sermon and that's about Jesus Christ being the cornerstone and so Johnny sings a song for us now cornerstone my hope is built on nothing less then Jesus' blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame But wholly trust in Jesus' name Christ alone, cornerstone Savior's love through the storm. He is Lord, Lord of all. His oath, His covenant, His blood support me in the whelming flood when all around my soul gives way he then is all my hope and stay he then is all my hope and stay Christ Savior's love through the storm. He is Lord, Lord of all. He is Lord, Lord. Well, once again, thank you very much for joining us this morning in our worship or whenever you've watched this. And uh, we do hope you've enjoyed being with us as we've worshipped the Lord Jesus. If you would like to know more about the church here or to talk about anything that we've uh, mentioned 
uh, which you either don't understand or want to know more about, then please do contact us through the website. We're always pleased to talk with you or to pray with you or for you. And so we end with a blessing. May Christ, who out of the defeat brings new hope and a new future. May he fill you with his new life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and all those for whom you've prayed this day and evermore. Amen. And as we go out, we remind ourselves that he is not here. Jesus has risen. Go, therefore, in the name of Jesus Christ in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. And we say together, thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.